Before we get going on this video, if you're subscribed to me, please consider turning on notifications and checking out the Patreon. If you're not subscribed to me, enjoy the video and consider subscribing. As always, thank you for watching. So, this is a bad, poorly made, cheap game designed for mobile, but there is no way a guy with my storied credentials of being an insane conspiracy theorist on the internet and also doing game reviews is not going to make a video talking about the Ancient Aliens game. This is also an excellent excuse for me to scream about Ancient Aliens into a mic for a while, which is always welcome. And by the way, yes, it has been a while since I uploaded, over a month or something, maybe even two months by the time I get this video out. The reason for this, uh, YouTube is dumb and bad and I needed to take a break. But now I'm back and I've got a plan for my next few videos. The podcast is coming back and we are officially out of the content dark age. So what is the deal with Ancient Aliens? Well, the game is essentially a hybrid of a city builder and an auto clicker, which might have been cool had it been taken a little bit more seriously during development. The fact that this game is so cheaply made when Ancient Aliens is actually a surprisingly large IP and the History Channel's longest running show is kind of insane. Huge missed opportunity here, but I'll get into that towards the conclusion. The framing device used to get this whole thing moving is that the player character is a person under hypnotic regression to relive their past life as the alien hybrid that helped run ancient Egypt for the Grey Aliens. It's kind of like the Animus from Assassin's Creed, only way cooler. And again, how do you fuck up this concept? This should be bulletproof. The point of the game is that you need to build a city to get enough workers to slowly build the Great Pyramid of Giza one tiny block at a time, which is actually a giant hydrogen orgone energy power plant. This pyramid requires millions of blocks to complete, so in theory, this should be a long-term project. Now, I'm not going to say very many positive things about this game, but I actually do think that this idea of having the pyramid slowly build in the background over time as the main objective while you do city management is an incredibly satisfying and good idea. If I had to guess, this was probably sort of the core concept the developers wanted to work from. Mechanically, Ancient Aliens is very simplistic and not in a good way. Like all city builders, we've got some resources. We've got our gold, which we get by building and staffing gold mines. We've got our DNA, which we get by harvesting it from people's homes or abducting them. And we've got our plausible deniability, which is kind of an abstract resource that you get from waiting for a while or building temples, which will convince the public that the aliens are sky gods and not aliens. You also have your human resources, which you get by balancing farmland and housing. There are no consequences to fucking up this balance. Your population just automatically goes up with more houses and more farms. There will never be a time where you accidentally don't make enough farmland for your housing and cause a famine or anything halfway interesting like that. Any building you build is going to cost gold, and any research you do to get access to more advanced technology is going to cost DNA. Workers exist solely to put blocks on the pyramid or staff various buildings like temples and mines. At this point, you should have a pretty clear picture of how the game works. Build more houses and more farms to get more people, assign those people to the pyramid, get more money by expanding your territory and building more mines, so on and so forth. But when you start looking a little deeper at these mechanics, a more bizarre picture starts to form. First of all, I lied to you. There's actually one more resource called Iridium. In real life, Iridium is the second densest naturally occurring compound, but in Ancient Aliens, it's how you save time. Don't want to wait 20 minutes for a building to go up? Iridium it. Don't want to wait an hour for this research to finish? Iridium. Gambling addiction? Iridium. Now, if you're actually paying attention to this video, and not jacking off to Splatoon Rule 34, you might think you know where this is going. 
I said that this game was clearly designed for mobile, and now I'm telling you that there is a rare resource that exists exclusively to make the game more bearable. So clearly, this is going to be the part where I tell you there is some kind of a cash shop where middle-aged moms spend $300 a day buying more iridium to fuel their dopamine addiction. And I'm happy to report to you, no, that isn't where this is going. First of all, building times and research times can be heavily reduced through other methods. For example, building two libraries, which is not hard, will reduce all of your research time down to one minute. Similarly, there are these buildings which can reduce your building times to be basically instant, very quickly. So, those time barriers are only there to make the early game a little more painful and give you real progression, which, honestly, not a bad idea. Had this game been developed more carefully, this would have really added to a satisfying feeling of watching your tiny village slowly turn into a futuristic Atlantean-style alternate history advanced civilization over time. There is a loophole where this falls apart, though. There are these structures you can build called glyphs. They're based on the Nazca lines, which are actually extremely cool and mysterious art pieces built by the Nazca people in South America. You can only really see them well from the sky, which of course has been giving ancient aliens theorists fear erections for decades. Glyphs work by creating a one-off supply of resources after a cost and a time period. You can't, as far as I know, speed up the amount of time they take to work, but the trade-off is they give you massive amount of resources in return. Two of these glyphs that you can build will give you iridium. This one only costs 12,000 gold, which is nothing, and only takes 15 minutes to finish, which will give you 50 iridium. Now, remember when I said the Wheel of Fortune takes iridium? You can get many things from this Wheel of Fortune, including extra spins, extra iridium, and gold. Now, normally when you have a gambling system like this, the idea is to set it up so that the player very rarely comes out on top. However, in this system, the player comes out massively ahead every single time. After buying a single Iridium Glyph, 50 Iridium will get you enough gold to buy dozens more. And eventually, when you're far enough into the game, this Wheel of Fortune will start giving you Iridium Glyphs that give you 500 Iridium and Gold Glyphs that will give you millions of gold very quickly. To tie this whole exploit together, one iridium can also be spent to place 1,000 blocks on the pyramid, which means that this loophole can be used to finish the pyramid extremely quickly, which is exactly what I did. Unfortunately, the end of this game is gated behind the plot, which drags on according to the objectives the game gives you over time. A lot of these objectives are intentionally designed to waste a bunch of time, because the original plan for the game was that the pyramid would take god knows how many hundreds of hours to complete. I'm not going to complete all these objectives. Also, when I finished the pyramid, everything turned green. I don't know if this is a bug or what this means, but I'm pretty sure I broke the game because the characters keep acting like I'm still building the pyramid even though it's done. Now this game, obviously, is also on mobile. Maybe the cash store mechanic is in place there, I don't know, I'm not going to check, and neither are you. I will say though it would be insane if they weren't, because it's very clear this game's entire function was based on the premise that the player is never going to have enough iridium, despite how easy it is to get infinite iridium. This game is bad, and under no circumstances should you buy it. And the Steam release is $20, which is exactly as unhinged as the claims made by the show. For me, this is a business write-off. For you, this is a borderline scam. Unfortunately, we will be waiting a bit longer for our actually good game set in the Ancient Aliens universe. What I want to leave you with after this part of the video is the following. I know game developers watch my videos, because they comment on them, and they yell at me on Twitter, and send me emails. If you are a game developer, or perhaps even one of the people who worked on this game, consider this. No one owns any of this shit. Ancient Egypt is public domain. Grey aliens are public domain. The idea of a time traveler is public domain. While there might be some certain specific aspects of books written by certain authors that are technically trademarked, 
The entire ancient alien's grift relies on the fact that what is being reported are historical facts. So nobody really owns any of it. No one owns the idea that the pyramid could have been a futuristic power plant. No one owns the idea of giant obelisks that are powered by crystals emitting orgon energy. No one owns reptilians. No one owns the flying saucer. No one owns the idea that King Pakal's journey to the underworld is actually depicting a space shuttle takeoff. You can just take most of this shit for free and do whatever you want with it without asking anybody. This is just up for grabs. And now it's time for me to get to the real point of this video, which is what you've all been waiting for, my personal blistering takes on ancient aliens theory. Let's kick it over to live action, Jacob. Because this is the internet, I'm going to have to issue a really obnoxious disclaimer for people that can't understand plain language. Ancient aliens theory is dumb. The evidence is bad, and the whole thing really doesn't make very much sense. Is it a cool story? Yes. Is it a fun thought experiment to be like, oh, what if Jesus was an alien? Yes. Is it true? I doubt it. There are some really interesting bits and pieces of information, like the Dogon tribe, which I'll let you read up on yourself, but mostly, there's not really anything here. There is no shortage of people on the internet talking about how the longest running show on the History Channel is dumb and pseudoscience and bad, but there is one specific criticism of the ancient astronaut hypothesis that I think is unwarranted or at the very least not very useful. There are a lot of people that will tell you that ancient aliens is racist, which I'm not sure is entirely accurate. And I need everybody to relax because this isn't going where you think it's going. So let's look a little bit into the detail of this criticism. Usually you'll hear something along these lines. Well, the ancient aliens guys say that aliens must have built the pyramids, but they don't have any problem with white Europeans building the cathedrals because they think, well, the Browns couldn't have possibly built the pyramids, so they must have had anti-gravity technology from the reptilians. So let's get one thing out of the way up top. Ancient aliens guys come at white people all the time. There's literally an episode about how <laughs> Excalibur is an alien weapon and the Lady of the Lake was an alien. Uh, they also have a lot of very funny things to say about the Norse pantheon, and they come at ancient Greece and ancient Rome quite a bit, which I guess there's kind of a debate up in the air as to whether or not Mediterranean people like the Greeks and the Romans were even white in the first place, almost like race is made up and not real or something. The second issue with this line of thought is that depending on which version of ancient alien theory you're talking about, it might be more or less accurate. Some versions would say that aliens didn't build the pyramids, but that the Egyptians were given technology to build them, or that they developed advanced technology themselves by some sort of weird off-grid guidance by the aliens. And I'm not sure that claiming an obviously non-white culture was capable of developing advanced technology or reverse engineering alien technology or anything like that is a theory that a racist would come up with. Although, it is certainly a dumb theory. The next problem is that ancient aliens, by definition, is talking about the ancient world. If you're discussing the ancient world, white people were doing fuck all. Europe was a backwater for the overwhelming majority of human history. You've got ancient Egypt doing Egypt stuff. You've got African tribes developing medical technology that white people wouldn't invent for another fucking billion years. You've got all the cultures in South America going off. You've got China inventing every invention. You have India writing some of the most complex literature of all time. Uh, the white people were really just lacking in the ancient world. So anytime you're talking about something cool in the ancient world, you're selecting for a group of people that sort of definitionally aren't white. Can you imagine how funny it would have been if I said that ancient aliens isn't racist because it has black friends? Reggie Watts believes in it, it can't be. And I've always been interested in ancient alien 
um, theories uh, just because of the rapid uh, ex escalation, escalation of or evolution of our species just like happening mm -hmm. you know you see that 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 upward trend and then suddenly it just goes you know like away from the expected evolutionary curve we just like took a almost a 180. So by this point, you're probably tweeting, why are you defending this specific criticism, Jacob? Skull emoji, skull emoji, seems sus. Partially, I just wanted to prove the point that arguing against it is really easy. But also, I think that if you really want to pull people out of this rabbit hole, how you talk to them matters quite a bit. Here's the deal. Ancient Aliens is actually very frustrating for archaeologists, historians, and theologists, and basically anybody who concerns themselves with ancient history. It objectively does spread a lot of weird misinformation. Like, my dad just straight up believes the theory about humans being genetically engineered by aliens to mine gold, which is probably like not ideal. So I can see why the academic community would want to push back against it. But here's the problem. Being racist is like top three or four one of the worst things that you can be accused of publicly. Even racists will typically do their best to hide the fact that they're racist. To use a particularly cartoonish example, if you imagine you see a neo-Nazi somewhere on the internet, and some other guy comes up and says, Hey, what's all this like weird stuff about Jews? seems a little racist. And then the neo-Nazi guy might reply with something along the lines of, I don't care about the Jews, it's just like, the bankers and the Hollywood elites. This is obviously to deflect from the fact that they're racist, even though, like, we all know what this means. This is called a dog whistle, and people do this because they know that their ideas aren't really acceptable in polite society. It's actually good that guys like this have to say stuff like this all the time because it means that the dumb shit they believe isn't generally accepted and they have to hide it in language. The point of all of this is most people are mostly good most of the time. Most people don't want to be the villain and don't particularly perceive themselves as villainous. So if your goal is to get your uncle who drives trucks for a living or your aunt, who's an office administrator, to stop believing that aliens built the pyramids to siphon orgone energy from Earth to, to power a stargate to interdimensionally travel to Zeta Reticuli, then calling them a racist is probably one of the worst ways you could go about doing that. These people don't know what the fuck you're talking about. They didn't go to college. They're not online you're confusing them and they're scared and they just want to listen to the man with the funny hair talk about aliens. If academia and generally educated people want to get a grip on the average person believing insane theories like ancient aliens theory, then they're going to have to learn how to talk to average people. They're going to have to learn how these people think and why they believe the things that they believe. Being accusatory isn't really going to get to the root of the problem, which is these people have basically been lied to by every institution for their entire life. They don't really know what's going on. Also, do we really think this man is capable of evil? Do we really think Eric Von Daniken is racist? Yeah, this guy is probably actually a little bit racist.